Last week, we visited with a commercial grower of greenhouse tomatoes. Well, today, we're going to show you how you can do it in your own hobby greenhouse. And joining us is Mr. Tim Hooper, who is the teaching greenhouse supervisor here at OSU. And Tim, welcome to Oklahoma Garden. Thank you, Steve. Now, tell us, first of all, what kind of construction you have here for your hydroponic type system. OK. Well, what you did here is we've taken a 1 by 7 board and attached 1 by 2s on either side of it and then put a piece of finished trim down the middle to divert any water so you don't have any channeling of the water. The water will come on both sides of this. Then we've overlaid it with a 4 mil black plastic. I like the black plastic because it does absorb the uh, heat in the winter time and it keeps the water solution a little bit warmer. Okay. So the system then you're actually what? Pumping the water from the it's, back? Yes. There's a, a solution stock tank down there and there's a small pump that pumps like one gallon per minute and it pumps it up here and it flows by gravity back into the tank. Based on the slope of your on board. On the slope, yes. There's uh, cinder blocks under here. Okay. It's elevated. Now we're going to grow cucumbers on this one and tell us how you've started them and, and a little bit okay. about the system with the cucumbers. This is the second crop of cucumbers we've tried. The uh, first one's uh, finished out so we came in with this next batch. Uh, what we did is we started them in these little inert rock wool cubes in the greenhouse and we soaked them with the uh, nutrient solution and what we'll do now is we'll come in here and set this right on that divider underneath the uh, string which will be used to train the uh, plants upward. Okay. Now on the cucumbers, what variety are you using? These are called Marlow. They're a, a European variety. They're seedless, they're burpless, and they're a thin skin type. They're real good for uh, greenhouse uh, production because they are self-pollinating. They're okay. all female flowers, so they all pollinate themselves. And you just train them right up the trellis? Just train. All we do is just twine them around. There. Okay. Now, to get this started, show us how you would actually hook the plastic up here. Okay. What we do here is after we get this down, we have our line in place. We'll take the plastic and we'll just double it up and we'll just take clothespins and just attach it just okay. so far down here. So this really is pretty inexpensive then. Very right? inexpensive. Okay. Now you're growing tomatoes the same way. Open up there and show us yes. kind of some how you This is uh, basically the same way. These have been growing in here since July. Okay. And, uh, and the roots the same just grow all the up and down. All down. Uh -huh. Okay. And then we just take and just close this and the water just flows right down back into okay. the uh, circulation thing. Now, the cucumbers were self-pollinating. What about the tomatoes? The tomatoes there? are a different story. You have to come in each day and shake it or vibrate it somehow. Okay. Uh, some people use blowers. Right. And some people well, use... Like, uh, our latest uh, s segment that we uh -huh. did, she would actually use a vibrator, I noticed, and then she would come in and Blow. to make it a little bit easier, she would use a leaf blower and uh, fall on them. So you just shake them. Shake them, mostly just shake them. The few okay. I have, I just come in and shake them. All right, have pretty good luck with pollination. They pollinate real well. Now, These, what variety do you, are you growing? There's so? three varieties here. There's Trend, Laura, and Caruso. Okay, Caruso. All right, now show us one of these that okay. you've harvested. This one right here is a Laura variety. Okay. And it's a greenhouse tomato. Mm -hmm. uh, they're an F1 hybrid. All right, let's cut into that. And Now, do you, you tell me they're pretty tasty, aren't they? I think they taste as well as any vine ripe tomato. Well, I know the wholesale one down there, too, they tasted great. Well, the color's pretty good on them, too. They're real meaty. Now, that's the purpose of this whole system, obviously, is to get our fruit and everything. But the key to it is is this is easy, but the hard part is the nutrient mix in the water. Why that's don't right. you tell us how to get started on the very beginning of that? Well, I would recommend before anybody gets started in this that they're going to have to have a couple devices. One's a pH meter that measures the acidity or the alkalinity of the water. OK, do we need to start with the so uh, water test, then? Yes. Um, through the county extension agents, you can take okay. a sample of your water down, and they'll send it off, and they will come back with this uh, water analysis sheet. Okay. And what you're interested in is the hardness of the water. The calcium and then magnesium together make up the hardness of the water. And from this, you will have to calculate the amount of calcium nitrate, calcium uh, sulfate that you'll have to add to the water. Okay, let's, let's make that a little bit easier to understand for the viewers, and if they wanted to try this. Can we buy a soluble fertilizer to start with to mix it in? There are several companies that have marketed the soluble type fertilizer. Okay. You've got and one here. This is just a basic starter solution. You mm -hmm. will have to go ahead and add the calcium nitrate, potassium nitrate, okay. and the calcium nitrate and the Epsom salts to this solution. And 
hopefully the company will tell us the rights most, to mix. Most of the time uh, that, and it's also a good idea just to go research. Most okay. libraries have uh, information. information about Plus, this. Plus this is becoming popular again in the hobby type setting, so there's a lot of references and resources out there, I'm sure, too. Yes, there are. Okay, now on your tests that you need to do specifically, let's talk about how you do that. Okay. Uh, after we get the uh, water in the stock tank and we get the fertilizer solution mixed up, we take the pH probe and we stick it in the water and we adjust the pH accordingly. Uh, most pHs around Oklahoma are running real alkalinity, have high alkalinity, and uh, so we'll have to drop the pH to a desirable level, mostly Which around 5.8 to 6. And you're doing what to change it? Okay, what you're doing, that you're going to have to add phosphoric acid okay. to lower the pH. The fertilizer solution that you have in the tank will lower it somewhat, but usually not low enough to get it down there, so you All have to right. add the phosphoric acid in minute amount, like 10 milliliters per 30 gallons. Okay. That's the size of this stock tank. All right. Now, with the fertilizer content in here, we have to be careful about salts. Is that Soluble right? Soluble salts, yeah. Uh, there's also another meter that you need. It's called an electroconductivity meter, and it measures the amount of soluble salts that are in the water. If you get it too high, you burn the roots. If you don't, you get too low, then there's not enough nutrients to take up. And it's a good idea to test this when you first mix up your solution, and then every day thereafter, just to make sure the level is staying there. A lot of times the level will drop off, and that means that the nutrients are being taken up by the plants. And you'll notice it quickly, won't you, in the color of foliage, those types of things. Yes. So that's why it's so that's crucial. Right, right. A good thing about this system also is you can change it. If you see that you're getting into trouble, you can readjust your fertilizers immediately. You don't have to wait. Okay. Well, now, Tim, in addition to the cucumbers and the tomatoes, you're also trying some uh, lettuce and carrots. Quickly tell us how you're doing that. Okay. The lettuce is just on a floating system. Uh, mix up the same concentration as for the tomatoes and put it in a tank and the lettuce is just floating on styrofoam in rock wool. Okay, and uh, you're also growing tomatoes in another Tomatoes, rock. okay, now this is more hydroponics. So grow okay. in rock wool, non-biodegradable um, inert substance. Okay. But it's more of a hydroponics than And you're NFT. using uh, just a line with water and what? It has a uh, stock tank and the pump comes on twice a day and it's watered through spaghetti type tube watering. Which has an emitter at each plant. At each plant. Well, Tim, there's a lot of good ideas that are really pretty inexpensive. I guess, again, the key to it is the water and the fertilizer mix. And if you'd like just more information on hobby greenhouses, you can go to your county extension unit and ask for fact sheet 6705, and that will give you company listings of hobby greenhouses, which a lot of them are starting to carry hydroponic products. Plus. Again, a lot of the uh, horticultural magazines offer all kinds of alternatives. So, Tim, thanks for sharing your ideas with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you.